Today's video is brought to you by my wallet, which has an extra 400 bucks in it because we did not call an electrician. So I mean no disrespect to qualified professional electricians or any tradesman for that matter. In fact, uh, just the opposite of the utmost respect. And uh, frankly, I'm a little disgusted. We Society treats a, a piece of paper with more value than an actual trade skill that you can that you can use. But with that said, uh, I'm not willing to uh, finance an electrician's beach house by have them charge me 500 bucks to put in a 220 outlet. So uh, we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to uh, do a simple, relatively simple uh, install such as that. The uh, Everything I got was from the big box orange place. You can get the same stuff from the big box blue place, whatever is your, uh, Whatever uh, tickles your fancy. Um, <clears throat> so we have a uh, 30 amp 220 outlet here. Uh, they make these in 20, 30s, 40s, and beyond that I don't really know. Uh, but this is your more standard uh, 30 amp service 220 outlet. And for this beautiful piece of plastic and uh, brass, they charge you something like 20 bucks. So it's kind of a rip off for what it is, but you need that. Uh, I've got the old uh, square D style breakers. Wife doesn't like a square D, prefers the round ones, but I guess that's a story for another day. Uh, so this is a um, a uh, 220 breaker. It's basically a smushed together set, series of two breakers that give you uh, both uh, both poles or both um, oh frig, what's the word? Uh, 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 phases. Jeez, give me enough time, I'll finally get there. So it's a two-phase breaker, all in one. Now you may see other ones that are singles, um, and they're connected together, it's the same thing. You just need to make sure you get the right breaker for your panel. Uh, the Square D that I have is in the garage, which is different from the one that I have the main in the house. But uh, make sure you grab one of those guys. About another 20 bucks, believe it or not, for something like that. Grab a couple of boxes. <laughs> and try to fit your square D in the box. Yeah, get it? Uh, no, a couple of boxes. Uh, one isn't for this project, one's for another project. And uh, we get a little cover for the uh, plate. And 25 feet of 10-2 Romex. Um, so with a 30 amp, 10-2 uh, is about, uh, well, 10-2 is right. Um, any if it was going on a longer run than 25 feet um, probably more than 50 feet I would strongly suggest you go into an 8 gauge uh, but I'm gonna be shorter than 25 feet so 10 2 is just fine because it's 220 and we're running two huts um, don't think you need 10 3 you do not we're just gonna have two huts and a ground coming back so grand total on all of this crap is about 79 bucks and while expensive it is certainly cheaper than having an electrician make a trip to your house, uh, especially if the install you're doing is very straightforward. You're not running it through walls, uh, finished walls, things like that. Um, I would strongly uh, advise a DIY. That said, if you burn your house down, do not blame me. Uh, this video is for educational purposes. However, please consult a licensed electrician in your area as well as uh, checking with your town, city, local, government, federal, world federation for uh, policies and uh, requirements that they may have. With that said, and that out of the way, let's get on to the show. Please forgive the uh, heater running in the background, but it, it's, uh, it's a little chilly out here. So here's the uh, panel that we're going to be working with. Uh, this is a sub-panel fed by two 50 amp circuits off my main house panel. And uh, I've only got three spots open, uh, which I'm going to use two of them for, for uh, obviously for this. So, you want to test fit your breakers, and it should just pop right in, bottom first. Uh, this panel is live, so be careful if you were, you know, first suggestion is shut off the, the sub-panel, the feed coming out to it, just to be safe. But, uh, again, do as I say, not as I do. So um, yeah, we obviously we're, we're in good shape there. Going to need to drop the line in, so you're going to need to bang out one of the knockouts. And for me, it's going to be dead center. Ah, come on. Okay, 
Okay, so we got our clamp and uh, tightened down up top. And it's ready to drop the cable in. And the key with this is don't, this is not the time to be stingy over six inches of wire. Give yourself some extra to play with. For two reasons. Jeez, that's a tough pull. Um, for two reasons. The uh, first one being, you want to get your cables arranged in a way where they're not on top of each, or your wires arranged in a way where they're not on the top of each other. Uh, when you open up a panel and you see a complete mess, bird's nest of wires, it's not just an aesthetic issue, it can also be a safety issue, especially if some of these um, aren't are spliced back too far, you've got exposed wiring showing, now you've got a whole bunch of stuff going over each other. It's a fire hazard. Um, so I like uh, to keep my box clean. <laughs> Don't we all though, right? I like to keep my boxes very clean, very organized. So you can see where there's an issue or if you're pulling out a wire, trying to change something in the future. It's very straightforward, but also for the safety side of things too. And that starts by, again, not being so cheap that you're, you're gonna cry about snipping off six inches of wire that you may have pulled too much through. Not a big deal. So once we're through, um, and you're comfortable with the amount that you have. I like to zip down my uh, clamp up top just to hold the wire in place. And we'll get uh, get to stripping. Geez, this is this this video has got a lot of sexual in, innuendo in it. I did not intend that to happen. Funny how that happens. So I'm not going to actually hook anything up here. I'm just prepping this for uh, prepping it for later. And if you were working on a dead box, then I suppose uh, wouldn't be so much of an issue. But I'm working on a live one, so. As far as the layout goes, I've decided that the smartest place to put this is going to be right between the two garage doors. For a couple of reasons, I'm keeping my run as short as I possibly can. Um, it's a high current situation and I'm not, I haven't told you what this is for yet, but there'll be a video coming out on that shortly. I'm waiting for a new garage toy to be delivered. But it's a high drain uh, or high load um, and then also it shoots a whole lot of sparks. So if you can figure out what that is, let me know. So uh, putting it in the middle here allows me to work outside just as easy as, in, as inside. It allows me to work on either bay of the garage. Uh, so I think that's going to make the most sense to sandwich it right in there. So uh, we're going to start on that process now. Um, well, as far as the box height goes out here, it's not like it would be in the house. Uh, out here because of the foundation, I usually end up going about 14 off the uh, footer. But if I'm off a quarter inch here or there, I'm really not too worried about it. That's a tough spot to hammer. And you're just going to punch out one of the knockouts in the back. Like so. So on the outlet itself, you're going to have three terminals. Uh, one will be green or some sort of marking, and it'll also happen to see, you'll see a little G there. That's your ground terminal. Uh, and then you've got your two huts. Uh, one has a little W for white. One has a little X. That would be your black. So the next step is just to uh, strip back the wiring and get this guy hooked up. 
and I won't be cutting this at all because I'll actually take that slack and push it up and make a loop right here which just gives you some uh, future proof in case you need to move the outlet or adjust it or anything like that. Klein Tools, one of the best little wire strippers. I know there's a million of them out there, but these guys are my favorite. All right. I don't use a power drill for uh, terminals like this. I just don't think that's a, a real bright idea. I know guys that do, but uh, I like the old-fashioned feel of the uh, screw in your hand. Screw in your hand? Jesus. Yeah, all right. Screw in your hand. So polarity on this actually doesn't matter. If you put the black into the white or the white into the black, it's not going to make a difference to the outlet. They're both, as long as they're different phases, you're, you're fine. Yeah, you see that? You get that positive feel when you do it by hand. I just realized I think I got that upside down. Yes, I do. Do I? I don't know. Yes, I do. There we go. So we'll start with uh, tying in the ground wire. And um, there are quicker ways to do this, but that obnoxious attention to detail thing that I got going on doesn't allow me to do a half, we'll, we'll say halfway job, how's that? So I'm just gonna look for an open ground. And if you have to double up, you can absolutely do that on this as well. But I got a spare here. This is this box doesn't have much going on, so and just kind of measure out roughly where you need to be. I make my bend. Those wind chimes. There's a reason those wind chimes are hanging in here and not outside. And we'll try to slide her in. Beautiful. Jeez! Screwdriver is about a millimeter shorter than it should be for that job. Okay, now we're um, on to the hot side. Uh, we'll start with the white, bend this guy into shape. All right, this wind chime's gotta go. Shut up! Oh, that's better. Okay. 
Okay. So on the bottom of these, uh, you have a, uh, on the bottom of the breaker itself, you've got a, another screw terminal. The only thing to be mindful of on that is making sure that you don't strip it back too far and expose too much of that wiring. Again, you don't want to see any exposed copper in a panel outside of the grounds. Uh, everything else, that insulation should be pretty uptight to the, uh, to the connection itself. So we're just going to get a rough idea. We need to be right about there. Put a little bit of a bend in it to make it go in easier. Alright, so I got the uh, two huts tied in, and again, you're just using the white and the black off the uh, 10 2 straight into the double breaker, and that's giving you your two phases because the phases are actually separated that feed into this panel like they are in everything else. You've got two bus bars that run down, so when you put in a double like this, it grabs between the opposing bus bars to give you your two phase. So this was, uh, again, not rocket science here, but um, at the same time, you do have to be very careful. And uh, I wouldn't advise, if you're not comfortable with everything you saw here, do not attempt it. As I said earlier, don't blame me if you electrocute yourself or set your house on fire. But that is a basic wiring job for a uh, 220 outlet. And uh, I'm very excited for, uh, I think, Saturday it's coming in. And uh, I've got my new garage toy that I should have bought years and years and years ago. I'll be uh, sure to uh, test out the outlet at that time and uh, test out my new toy. So if you like this type of thing, please hit like and subscribe. I very much appreciate it. Otherwise, everyone stay safe. Have a great day.